Annyeong! Hello everyone! So again, welcome to our subject and for today's discussion, we will be talking about special journals and subsidiary ledger. Okay? So I hope that you are safe and you're doing great today. So let's start with our discussion. So for our first agenda, let's try to have a quick recap now of what a general journal is now so that we can distinguish it with our special journal so in our discussion of service business and also um, the introduction of merchandising business we have already used the general journal okay but in totality when we talk about a journal it is uh, a record or a, a tool in recording our business transactions in chronological order, whether it would be general journal or special journal. So in a general journal, okay, so it's actually being used no, typically for recording the transactions, okay, if you do not have any special journal. And this general journal contains the following, okay, so we have, of course, the date. Okay, it is important because we are recording the transactions in chronological order. Also, we have the description or in other term or in other books, it would be particulars no? or even explanation column wherein we use this column to record our um, account titles, okay? which is uh, ever debited or kaya naman credited. Okay, so for this example, we debit cash, the account title for cash, and we credit capital. As you all know, we indent yung credit natin. Okay, and also under this description column, we use it for writing um, some sort of short explanation or even sometimes computations related to the transaction. So do not forget to indent it properly as well. Okay, so that's the function of the description column natin. Okay, aside from that, we have as well the PR column. So ano po ba yung PR natin? It represents yung tinatawag natin na posting reference. So the posting reference column is being used no, to um, control no, that this particular transaction was already been posted to our general ledger. So as you can see, naka-leave pa to as blank because in our process sa class, di ba? So we only write the account number here once na natapos na po natin i-post yan sa ledger. So pag nilagyan ko na to, let's say for example sa cash natin ng 101, it means it was already posted sa cash ledger. Even to the capital, for example, the account number is 301, then it means na na-post na po siya sa ating general ledger. Okay? So that's the purpose of our PR column. Next, we have debit and credit columns. So as you all know, we write here the amount of our transaction. So we have to take note as well that in writing the debit or credit, no, it should be in line with the title. So just like cash, na, naka-debit siya. Thus, um, the amount should be written in debit, then for the capital, which is indented, and it represents the credit, then it should be written on the credit part. Now, take note as well that in the rules of debit and credit, you should always take note that the debit is equal to our credit. Okay? And in writing the amount, especially for those who are using the uh, general journal that has yung columns per each of the Columns, no? So it's just like this debit, meron tayong eight mini columns. This actually represents our what? Um, amount or placement of that amount in our particular um, debit and credit column. So again, the thousands, the ones, the pesos should be written um, properly in each of the columns where they should be represented. And do not forget, guys, that in our class, diva, we write dash sign. Uh, if ever that we have um, no centavo, okay? And even take note as well that we are not using comma sign or even decimal point once we write in the general journal since, again, it has already a placement on each of the columns. That's why we do not use those um, punctuations anymore, all right? So that's how we use the general journal before, no? We journalize the transactions here. And then afterwards, we post it doon naman sa general ledger. But let's talk about later yung general ledger, okay, um, after we have discussed the counterpart of this general journal, which is or which are the special journals, 
Okay? So, ngayon po, I hope na nare-recall na ninyo yung usefulness ng general journal sa atin in what we have discussed previously. So, for today, we will be talking about special journals naman po. So, when we talk about special journal, okay, this is a journal that was being used to record frequently occurring transactions. So, as you all know, sa general journal naman, nakarecord naman lahat ng transactions, whether frequently occurring siya or hindi. But for convenience purposes then, no, since the transactions will be recorded based on frequently occurring transactions, then okay, we will be using the special journal. Okay, it helps to summarize transaction processing with a common characteristic. So mamaya, we will have various types of special journals and the transactions will be classified and journalized on that particular journal depending upon its characteristic. It could be either sale or kaya naman purchase, disbursements, or even receipts. Okay, so we have... Um, we have this special journal that reduces the tedious tasks of recording both the debit and credit amount, the account names, as well as the amounts in our general journal. Okay, so na-facilitate ng special journal yung um, pagre-record natin kasi somehow nasa columns na po yung account title. So no need for us to write it. And as well as we do not need already to write any description kasi di ba, minsan pag ginamit natin yung general journal, halos pa ulit-ulit lang din po tayo ng description or explanation na nilalagay since um, they have the same transaction. So by using the special journals, it facilitates yung mga processes na yun. Now, we have to talk about the types of gen uh, special journals. No? Um, we have actually four to discuss here. But again, it depends upon the companies. Baka marami pa po silang uri ng special journals. No? But these are just the typical types of special journals. Okay, we have number one, the sales journal. Okay, so mamaya we will be discussing it further. Okay, and also the cash receipts journal, the purchases journal, and the cash disbursements journal. So as you can see and as you can read the description of that journal, you have already the clue kung para saan po yung special journal na yan. Okay? So let's start with the sales journal. So what's the purpose of this sales journal? It is used to record all sales on account. Now, if we are talking about merchandising business, of course, it would be uh, debit accounts receivable. Tama ba? And we credit sales, okay, since all our sales on account. Pag service business naman, hindi siya sales journal, it would be a service journal. So applicable din pala to sa service business, sir? Yes. Okay, you just simply need to modify the name kasi nga some of the titles are not applicable for service business, okay? So but since we are already in the context of merchandising business, then let's put it as sales no so we debit account receivable and credit sales kung sakali man na we have sales on account eh, hindi po ba um, in business aspect and in our transactions recorded previously di ba minsan paulit-ulit yan that once we sold on account debit account receivable credit sales tapos ilalagay mo sa descriptions sales on account di ba so paulit-ulit via the use of sales journal okay so mamaya po as you can see now the Ayan, no? the titles in our sales journal, it already facilitated the recording of it. Okay? So, importante lang po, this is just a pro forma guys. Ha? Yung mga ipapakita ko sa inyo na sales journal, these are just pro forma. So, pwede pang ma-modify yung mga contents or columns niyan depending upon um, how it was being used in the company. Kasi may kalayaan sila to, to edit it or modify it depending upon their needs. No? Lalong lalo na kung, kung sadyang yung transactions na yun will be only for their company. Okay? So, pero yung typical, no? we have of course the date just like the general journal. Importante po yan. We have also sales invoice number or invoice number we keep track on that no para aware tayo kung saan nang galing na sales invoice or number invoice number yung ating transaction na yon and also account debited actually this will be referring to the customer okay sino po yung customer natin na 
um, pinautangan natin, yung bumili on account, yun po ilalagay doon. Not necessarily, baka sabihin mo, ay debit account receivable. No. It should be the customer or the name of the company itself no? na pinautang natin so that we could be able to easily track kung sino po yung mga pinautang natin. And also, just like our general journal, we have as well our PR. No, yung PR natin is um, typically the posting reference. And sir, account number po ba ito? No, actually hindi. For the purpose of sales journal, mamaya pag na-discuss na po natin in totality kasama yung um, ating subsidiary ledger. Okay, so may example po tayo sa pinakadulo. We just simply write the PR as check mark, not necessarily account number, kasi hindi po natin yan agad ipopos sa um, ledger. Okay, so yun po yung function mamaya ng discussion natin for a subsidiary ledger. Okay, and finally, as you can see, the column no debit account receivable and credit sales, yan po mismo yung nature ng transaction natin, di ba? Na hindi na natin kailangan pa ulit-ulit na ilagay yung debit account receivable credit sales since nasa column na lang ho, yun. So what you're going to do is just, is just simply write, of course, the amount. So pag nilagay mo dyan na 50,000, okay, pwedeng may peso sign na since uh, journal to, or even we can Um, erase it kasi as a general rule, di ba? Hindi tayo pwede maglagay ng peso sign. Okay, so ayan po. Once you write it there, it means already that um, it is debited to account receivable and credit sales. So no need for us to write the um, account titles of account receivable and sales okay, in this journal. Okay, so ganyan po yung itsura ng ating sales journal. So mamaya babalikan po natin yan as we give you an example. Okay? Another type of our special journal is cash receipts journal. So from the word itself, cash receipts, no? This journal is used to record all of the cash inflows or receipts in an accounting period. So lahat ng pumapasok sa atin na cash, whether from collections, whether from loan, whether from investment, or whether it's coming from sales. Okay, so whatever it is na inflows, nakadebit po yung cash, and whatever is credited na account, okay, basta nakadebited po yung cash, then again, this will be recorded under the cash receipts journal. So again, um, we do not need to use already the titles no, in, in recording it since malamang sa malamang nasa columns na yan ng ating cash receipts journal. Okay, so to record all of the inflows. Now, let me give you an example of... Um, A format ng cash receipts. Okay? So, as you can see, guys, we have the date again. No? Importante yung date na yan. Okay? Buti pa nga yung journal. May date, di ba? Joke lang. <laughs> okay? So, ayun. Um, we have to write the date again for, for chronological uh, recording. No? And also, we have the OR or the official receipt number. Since, as you all know, guys, once we receive something, we should issue an official receipt. So, malamang we keep on track as well for the um, official receipt number kung saan nang galing yung transaction. And also, this description, no, column, will be used not for the sake to write the account titles. Sometimes we write account titles there but not necessarily. No? Pwedeng isusulat natin dyan kanino natin na-receive yung ating um, cash. Okay? So, um, and also account title. Mamaya, I will be um, giving you as well an example. Now, we have also the PR or the posting reference. So, just like what I have said in the special journal or sales journal, journal this uh, posting reference will be used no for the purpose of um again um posting but not necessarily on the general uh, ledger kasi nga po um we will be using as well subsidiary ledgers in this case okay also in the debit no Uh, as you can see, pro forma lang po ito. Pero we have the cash since yun yung major na um, dinidebit nating account for any receipts. Okay, of course, once you have collected an account receivable, so most likely if sales discount is applicable, then we will have sales discount. So no need for our... Uh, No need for us again to write the uh, title na sales discount. You just simply write the amount there. And also we have the 
um, credit columns naman which represents uh, various no na mga titles such as accounts receivable okay so it's either used for collections ng accounts receivable diba debit cash then credit accounts receivable or debit cash debit sales discounts or even credit accounts receivable no um mamaya may encounter natin yan sa example and also sometimes kung yung receipts natin or inflow came from cash sales so we debit cash credit sales tayo so ilalagay mo sa sales no and um as you can see pwede kasi manggaling din sa iba't iba pang titles yung ating cash natin so we just simply use the sundry account so hindi po yan account title guys ha yung sundry account na yan this is just a, a title no na ginagamit natin for the purpose of those accounts that were not written in this column i'll repeat po no this sundry account was being used no for the other items or other titles that we cannot found in the columns kasi ang nakalagay lang dito is accounts receivable and then sales natin so paano kung let's say for example investment by the owner diba so ano yung entry natin kung investment by the owner na cash so we debit cash credit yung capital E pag tingin mo sa credits, ay wala namang capital ah. Alam nga naman sa accounts receivable or sales ko ilagay. So don't worry no because nandiyan si Sandri account. Okay? So what you're going to do is if you're going to um, use the Sandri account, okay? Halimbawa yung example natin na debit cash, credit capital. Okay? So let me give you an example. Okay? So yung date natin, for example, 2020, um what's the date today? October um October 28, for example, okay, October 28, uh, may OR number, pwede pong binigyan ng OR yung invest, uh, investor, no? Let's say, for example, 401. Okay, then for our description, okay, ano nga ulit yung debit? Cash, ba? Diba? So, we write the amount on cash. Let's say, for example, 50,000 yung naging investment. Okay, and then, of course, um, wala tayong credit na capital dyan. So, what you're going to do, pag wala po yung title doon sa credit, you simply write the title here in the description. So, halimbawa, um, Berg, Berg Capital. Okay? So, halimbawa, yan yung title, Berg Capital. Okay? And then, dahil sa credit, wala ka po makikita dyan, yun yung purpose ng Sandri account. So, dahil sinulat natin Berg Capital yon, so we will be writing here on the sundry account, the 50,000. Okay? So, as you can see, um, hindi tayo nag-create ng panibagong column for the capital, but rather, we just simply use the sundry account na column, okay, and write the title in the description column. So, yun po yung purpose, ha? Kapag meron tayong hindi nakita dito na title, you just simply write the title in the description column, okay, and then the amount in the sundry account column. Pero kung yung title po ng ating credit ay either accounts receivable or sales or any na nasa column supposed to be kung minodify niyan yan, then yun po yung gamitin. Sundry account is only used if the title is not found in our columns. Okay? Are we good on that? Alright, very good. So, any questions guys or clarifications? So, if you have one, please key in your questions to our respective chat boxes or you can comment your questions in this YouTube video. Okay? So, that's the cash receipts journal. So, again, um, more of its usage mamaya for our example. Okay? So, ayan. So, that's the cash receipts. Next would be we have purchases journal. So when we talk about purchases journal from the word itself purchases na it is used to record naman all of the purchases of merchandise on account. Okay? So ano ba yung entry natin? Remember we have discussed periodic and perpetual. So we try to use muna dito periodic na no? but somehow we can use as well perpetual. Okay? So if this is periodic, um pag purchases on account yan, so we just record debit purchases, 'di ba? And we credit what accounts payable. So yun yung pa ulit ulit na entry natin kapag tayo po ay bumili on account. So we can use the purchases journal no to record this. Kasi um hindi lang naman po tayo isang basis magpo-purchase no. It would be somehow we have many times that we have purchased. So we could use the purchases journal for this entries. Okay, and also guys take note that somehow it's not only limited to purchases on account. 
Sometimes purchases journals are also used to recall all of the purchases, whether merchandise or not. No, kasi may mga binibili rin tayo na hindi merchandise. No, on account. So example po nun would be, um, let's say you have purchased supplies on account. So what you did was to debit supplies, okay, and credit accounts payable, de ba? O kaya naman baka bumili ka ng uh, machineries on account. So debit machineries or machines, de ba? Credit tayo ng accounts payable. So ganyan po if you are intending to use it for merchandise or not. So you have your option, no? Kasi pwede mong i-modify, basta ang purpose is to record the purchases on account. Okay? Hindi po siya pwedeng for cash, guys, ha? Kasi if this is for cash, then nasa susunod tayo na special journal. Okay? So this is only for on-account purchases natin. Okay? So are we clear on that? So let me give you an example format. Okay? So ito lang po ay... Um, Purchases on account lang to mapapakita ko ngayon. Pero mamaya, in our example, we can use it for other purposes as well na on account. Okay, so we have again the date. Importante ulit yung date. No? The account credited, of course. This account credited will be used for those ating mga tinatawag na um, credit, uh, sorry, um, vendors or suppliers. Okay, kanino tayo umutang? Okay, yung mga vendor. Pagpasensya nyo na po yung sulat ko. So, vendors or even the suppliers, kung kanina tayo nangutang. Kasi we need also to keep on track on that. Okay. Also, we have the posting reference. Okay. So, this will be used as well once we have posted it naman sa tinatawag natin na subsidiary ledger mamaya. Okay. So, hindi rin po account number ang ilalagay dyan, but rather check mark po mamaya. Okay. And then, we have debit purchases, di ba? Kasi usually, purchases on account nga. And then, credit accounts payable. Okay, so pwede rin po minsan kinukombine na to kagaya sa sales journal kanina na uh, magkukombine na sa isang column, di ba? You have the purchases and then accounts payable. So pinakita ko lang din po dito that it could be separated into two different columns, okay? So hindi po itong, itong format na to nag apply sa second bullet na use for merchandise purchased or not merchandise, no? Kasi minsan, pag alimbawa, yung supplies, dapat may column ka pa ng supplies dito kung gusto mo siyang i-modify in that case. Okay? So that's the purpose of a purchases journal. Used to record all purchases of merchandise or all purchases, whether merchandise or not, on account. Okay? And then finally, in our list of uh, types of special journals, okay, we have the cash disbursements journal. Okay, so from the word itself, cash disbursements. Diba? So, saan ginagamit to? It is typically used for all of the cash outflow so or payments for the period. So, kaya hindi po pwede yung payment for cash dun sa purchases journal ha? Kasi on account lang yon and the payments should be recorded here in our cash disbursements journal. Okay, so lahat ng payments. So, kung ano man yung debit mo, whether it is an expense, o kaya naman, um, accounts payable, yung nakadebit mo, no? Or whatever it is na binayaran mo, basta ang credit po ay cash. Okay? You can record it using the cash disbursements journal. Okay? So, here's a, a, an example format of our cash disbursements. So, you have the date, of course, again, no? We have the CV number. Sir, ano yung CV number? So, sometimes kasi companies are using vouchers, di ba? We have already used these vouchers in our discussion in service business before. No? Yung voucher po, it's actually a control being implemented under the voucher system that each of our Cash disbursements, so lahat ng babayaran mo, should have an approved bash voucher or cash voucher. Okay? So, pwede rin pong mawala ito if the company naman does not use a voucher system. Okay? So, I have just put it here since most of the time, companies are employing voucher system. Di ba kagaya ninyo? Um, since you are senior high school, no? um, you have a debit voucher, so uh, binibigay nyo sa school, di ba? So, para mabayaran si school ng DepEd, then they need to present that voucher, approved voucher, di ba? So, parang ganun din sa company, no? Um, bago siya mag-release ng payment, it should have an approved voucher na, na authorized or na pirmahan. Okay? 
Also, we have the description columns as well. So, pwede pong isulat dito kung sino po yung pinagbayaran natin. O kaya naman, um, account title as well. No? If we use the Sundry accounts, di ba? Kasi nandito na naman si Aling Sundry. Okay. And also the PR, no? yung PR natin is uh, again posting reference which we could use either account number o kaya naman po um, check mark lang since um, baka affected po yung ating i-discuss mamaya na subsidiary ledger. Okay? So for the debit, no, as you can see, we have accounts payable which is typical kasi we paid the purchases on account kanina, no? kaya debit accounts payable. Sometimes we also purchase for cash, kaya we debit these purchases. And then, yung mga ibang account titles na binayaran natin, let's say, um, salaries expense, ano pa, utilities expense, no? um, we have also interest expense and other expenses as well as, let's say, nagbayad ka ng notes payable kung sakali man. No? So you have debited those accounts and as you can see, wala ulit siya sa, sa ating mga typical na columns then use the Sundry accounts. But do not forget, guys, that again, pag ginamit mo yung Sundry account, you need to write the title in the description. Okay? And then, for the credit part, we have the typical na credit, which is cash, since ito po ay cash disbursements journal, and also the purchase discount. Okay? So, yung purchase discount natin is uh, for the applicability na baka nagbayad ka uh, within the discount period. Okay? So let me just give you an example for Sundry account. Ah. Halimbawa, ang entry natin is um, debit um, salaries expense. Okay, I hope na nakikita niyo sinusulat sa screen. Na. Debit salaries expense, let's say 2,000 and credit cash. Halimbawa, ganyan yung entry. No? Napansin mo, wala sa account title yung um, ng debit yung salaries expense. So what you're going to do? So of course the date halimbawa 2020 no um October 28 okay let's say meron um cash voucher cash voucher number let's say um 101 sample lang po yan ha and then dahil gagamitin natin yung sundry account since wala po sa column ng debit yung salary expense so you just simply write salary expense okay salary expense pakibuo na lang po ha Pagpasensya nyo na yung pangat na sulat ko. Okay? So, 2,000, di ba? So, dahil sa debits, uh, kailangan natin isulat yung 2,000, then it will fall under the Sundry account. Okay? 2,000. Okay? And then, di ba, credit to cash naman, so 2,000. Ayan. So, ganyan yung gagawin natin. Okay? So, mamaya din in our example, I will try to put an emphasis ano yung ilalagay natin na posting reference. Kasi pag ginamit po yung sundry na title, ipopost mo agad yan. Pag hindi naman po sundry yung title, then hindi mo agad ipopost. Okay? So, what would happen here is pwedeng pag na-post na siya dun sa ledger, mamaya in our uh, example, no? Okay? So, we will be putting here the account number. Okay? So, mamaya po yung real process kasi hindi ko pa nade-discuss yung sa subsidiary ledger kasi connected niya yung mga itong special journals na to with the subsidiary ledgers. Okay? So, ganyan po yung sa cash disbursements journal. Okay? So, any questions or clarifications about this for uh, special journals na diniscuss po natin? Okay? So, I think mukhang wala naman po. Again, if you do have any questions, please let me know. Okay? So, the next part of our discussion will be um, the subsidiary ledger. Okay? Pero before we proceed with the subsidiary ledger, let's try to discuss first again and review ano po yung usage ng ating um, general ledger. Okay? So, we have also used this red general ledger in our service or um, even the introduction of the merchandising business. Okay? And it is typically used to classify the transactions recorded in the journal. Okay? So, kanina yung journal ay pang recording phase, di ba? In the phases of accounting. Pero the general ledger is more on the classifying phase. Hindi, hindi mo kaha phase. P -H -A -S -E. Okay? So, 
Ayan. So, as you all know then that each of the account in the chart of accounts natin, okay? So, familiar naman kayo sa chart of accounts, di ba? This is the listing of all of the account numbers and their corresponding account titles. Okay? Also known as control account. So, lahat po nung mga nasa chart of accounts natin, they are known as control accounts and they have their own general ledgers. Okay, so, kanya-kanya meron sila. Now, this is the typical general ledger na ginamit po natin in our previous discussions na. Okay, so, um, this is an example general ledger for cash. As you can see, lahat ng transactions are being recorded here or classified here. No? Uh, again, importante yung mga dates, no? yung items. As discussed before in our um, discussion of service business accounting no these items will just be um, blank kapag um, typical lang na transactions no pero kapag ito ay beginning balance we have written here before begbal de ba begbal pinalagay ko diyan and also um, you can use as well the items column to uh, put the ending balances okay so uh, also the PR, of course, kung sa ang journal ng galing yung posting natin, kaya GG1 yan, kasi general journal page number one ang ibig sabihin yan, even number two, and then your debit, okay, and also here the credit, okay, so also anong tawag natin dito sa maliit na to, actually in our class kung writing uh, part ito, di ba, ang tawag natin dyan ay pencil footing, di ba, or footing, so, pinapagamit ko sa inyo dati ay lapis. Okay? And then, ang goal natin, pag na-post na lahat, then calculate yung debit and credit. Kung saan yung mas malaki, then doon mo ilalagay yung difference nila. So, dito sa example natin, no, mas malaki yung debit since 520,400 compared with the total credit na 498,200. Okay? So, the difference was 22,200 na nandito po sa items column natin since dyan ko pinalagay sa inyo in our previous discussion. Okay? So, I hope na nare-recall pa po ninyo kung paano gamitin yung general ledger natin. Ha? So, lahat ng itong maliliit na amounts na binilugan ko, they are all written in pencil kung gagamitin natin siya sa manual process kasi pencil footing yung tawag. Okay? So, are we clear on that, guys? So, we use it to classify. So, all of our account titles in the chart of accounts have their own um, general ledger. Okay? While when we talk about the subsidiary ledger, okay? So, a subsidiary ledger is a ledger itself which stores the details for a general ledger control account. So, typically, no, um, it is another type of ledger for classifying part, but it store more details no, about the general ledger control account. So, meron lang pong piling mga account titles na coming from the general ledger that has its subsidiary ledgers. Okay? So, what are those? Typically, no, these are for large amount of transaction information that usually clutters in the general ledger. So, minsan kasi, di ba, marami tayong pinopost dati. And kapag sa general ledger, ang dami halos lahat nung nasa debit or credit in that particular um, account. No? Pero via the use of subsidiary ledger, we tend to uh, minimize the recording in or classifying in the general ledger. We put it first in the subsidiary ledgers okay and typically we have the accounts payable subsidiary ledgers no ito yung papakita natin mamaya also accounts receivable subsidiary ledger okay and in some aspects just like what i have experienced before in our company no we have as well a fixed asset ledger Okay, so our subsidiary ledger and also we have the inventory subsidiary ledgers. Okay, so pero for this discussion, we will just focus on the typical which are accounts payable and accounts receivable. Okay, so mamaya we will be discussing them further. And then um, these subsidiary ledgers were actually used as part of the entity's control. Kasi there would be somehow reconciliation. No? Kung magkano yung nasa general ledger, dapat kung magkana rin po yung nasa subsidiary ledger, let's say for accounts payable, dapat match po sila. Okay? Since these are control accounts or control um, 
control um, procedures or control um, prospects of the particular company. Okay, so now let's discuss the examples of subsidiary ledger that we are about uh, to take on this discussion. Okay, so let's have accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. Okay, so for the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger, it is being used no, to show all of the history payment or payment history of each of the customers that you have extended the credit. Okay, so account receivable, sino yung pinagpautangan natin? So, mamomonitor natin yan, okay, yung, yung sales natin on account or even yung payment niya, okay, for each of those customers in this um, account receivable subsidiary ledger. Okay? Lahat lang ng pinagpautangan natin, ha? Kasi account receivable lang naman marirecord yon. Now, this is just a typical example of or format of an account receivable subsidiary ledger. Of course, you have the customer name kung kanino ka nagpautang. Okay, magiging kayo enterprises as an example. Then we have the date. No? Importante yung date again. Items column. No? Uh, as you can see in the items column, we have written here beginning balance, no? um, sales invoice number, and even the credit terms, and also um, collected in full. No? Pero you can... Um, Minimize naman yung sinusulat mo dyan na words. No? I've just given you some examples on this one. Okay? And then for the PR or posting reference, okay, as you can see guys, um, for the beginning balance, just like what we did in our service business, no? pag begbal natin, checkmark lang po siya. And then for for sales, no? we have, um, siyempre, nang, saan nang galing yung pinos mo dito? Okay, let's have SJ1. Sir, an SJ1? This is actually for uh, the sales journal page number one. Okay? Uh, sir, ano yung CRJ? Uh, cash receipts journal number one. So, kung saan nang galing yung pinos mo dito na uh, amount, no? kung saan journal. Kasi, kumbaga, nabanggit mo kanina or even in the previews that it is part of the control that once you write it there, ibig sabihin you can cross-reference. Diba? So, ito, Pag, pag gusto kong tignan sa nanggaling tong amount na to, nasa sales journal page number one. So, you can check for the sales journal number one kung nandun nga po talaga yung amount. Okay? And of course, sa sales journal number one, may PR din doon. Nakalagay malamang check mark kasi na-post mo na sa subsidiary ledger. Okay? So, ano yan? Cross-referencing. Okay? So, of course, pag balance, begbal, nakalagay na lang po siya sa balance. This column for balance is the running balance natin. Ha? So, no need for you to pencil foot for this subsidiary ledger. Okay? And also, dahil uh, malamang nag-sales tayo on account, then debit account receivable yon, and this is account receivable subsidiary ledger, then nag-post tayo sa debit. So, kung nasaan side yung accounts receivable natin in the recording process no, sa journal, then dun din dapat po siya nakalagay dito sa posting. So, ito, as you all know, in the sales journal, the entry is debit accounts receivable and credit sales. Kaya yung ating ipopost na amount here in the subsidiary ledger should be in the debit part. Okay? Okay, so... 30 na beginning balance plus, ah, sorry, 20 na beginning balance plus 30 na na-add. So, the balance after this would be 50,000. So, yun yung running balance. And then, um, for the last transaction, as an example, no, ng collecta. So, ano ba yung entry ng collections? Okay, sa so debit cash and credit account receivable. So, if such the case, then nakakredit po yung account receivable, then of course, it will reduce our balance. Kaya 30,000 na lang po. No need to double rule or pencil foot or or put a box sign here kasi then that's representing already the ending balance. Okay? So, this is just a typical format na gagamitin natin sa klase ha, for this uh, particular na example natin. Or sorry, uh, yeah, example natin. Pero um, they can also modify it kasi pwede nilang itulad yung subsidiary ledger sa kagaya rin po ng general ledger na magkaiba yung column for debit and also magkaiba yung column for credit and then ipipensil foot mo. So, pwede rin po yun. But I've just used the most convenient format that we can have. Okay? So, any questions or clarifications before, before we move forward? So, please key in your questions on our respective chat boxes. Okay? Alright. So, that's very good, no? 
Okay, so that's for our accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. So now for the last type of subsidiary ledger, so we will be having the accounts payable subsidiary ledger. So kung yung accounts receivable subsidiary ledger is used for um, monitoring kung sino po yung pinagpautangan natin or those um, customers natin who are on credit, this accounts payable subsidiary ledger is used to monitor naman lahat ng ating pinagkautangan. Okay? Either the supplier or even vendors okay, of the merchandise or even some other entities kung saan tayo ng utang. Okay? That we have the accounts payable. Okay? So, as you all know that this accounts payable subsidiary ledger will be matched as well to our accounts payable na general ledger. Okay, so imamatch natin yon and just like accounts receivable subsidiary ledger and the account title of subs accounts receivable, dapat po magmatch yung ending balance natin since this is kumbaga a part of the control for accounts payable. Okay, so I am showing you right now an example of a format for accounts payable subsidiary ledger. Now we have the um, creditor's name natin, kung sino po ang, or even vendor, or even supplier's name, no? kung kanina tayo ng utang, okay? And of course, the date, okay? Tapos, the items column for some small descriptions. We have as well the posting reference as well, no? The debit and credit as well as the balance columns. Okay, as you can see, no, you have written the balance again on the balance column at my check mark since this is begbal lang. Okay, and then of course the other items uh, should be uh, written. Example, invoice number 143 and then the credit terms kung ano po yung pinagkautangan natin na credit terms. And then PJ1, ano yun? Purchase journal page number 1. Kasi diba, ang entry natin doon would be debit um Purchases and credit accounts payable. So dahil nag-credit po tayo na accounts payable, then we have posted it here. Okay, kaya nag-PJ1. So again, for the purpose of cross-referencing it with the purchase journal page number one. And since accounts payable has a normal balance of credit, so any input here would be um, for, for any credit accounts payable should also be um, posted here under the credit side. Okay, and then for the balance, as you can see, beginning is 100, tapos nag-increase yung accounts payable natin because of additional utang natin from mahal kanya trading, then okay, the balance will also increase at 125,000. And then if there would be a full payment of balances, no, of course, kapag full payment, we credit cash, it will came from the cash disbursements journal. Kaya itong CDJ number one, cash disbursements journal yan, number one. Okay, let's say the payment was 100,000, then the ending balance as well is 25,000. So again, the balance column is the running balance of our um, accounts payable subsidiary ledger. Okay? So um, we use again the subsidiary ledgers no? um, in connection with the control accounts na accounts receivable and accounts payable as part of our control. And also we could monitor kung uh, kung accounts receivable subsidiary ledger yan, sino yung pinagpautangan natin. While for accounts payable subsidiary ledger, we could use this para ma-monitor kung sino naman yung pinautangan or sorry, pinagkakautangan natin. Okay? So I hope that you have understand yung ating theoretical concept regarding um, the special journals and also the subsidiary ledgers comparing it with our um, comparing it with our general journal and general ledger. Okay? So, I am ending it this uh, presentation here. So, maya maya on the next video, no, you will have the example related to the usefulness of our um, special journals and as well as the subsidiary ledger. So, I'll keep, uh, I'll wait you there for our um, discussion of the example. Okay? So, again, have a great day and annyeong. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, bye-bye.